Hello, my name is Steve Goodwin, and this is my Anchor Test video number 116. Today we will look at this aluminum 27 pound Spade A100 anchor. We'll also be comparing it to the previous testing of the same sized but heavier Steel Spade S100 anchor. Also, I'd like to make a few comparisons to the aluminum Sarka Excel number no. 5 anchor. Now the a100 did come out at 27 pounds on my scale. The tip of the anchor in the setting position was 12 pounds for a tip to total weight ratio of 44%, which is quite high. It is ballasted with lead as the other two anchors are. Uh, on the spade anchors, the lead is exposed to salt water and does pose the potential to affect the surrounding metal due to dissimilar metal corrosion. I'll mention that the Excel's uh, correction, the Excel's lead ballast, is fully encapsulated and welded shut and in theory uh, salt water won't have access to that lead. Both spade anchors have the same size flukes however the shanks are a little different. Uh, being made of aluminum they've had to use thicker material and the overall result is that the width of the aluminum spade shank is wider. Uh, both the leading edge or lower part of the shank and and overall it is wider and therefore in theory more difficult to penetrate seabeds. So when I got this anchor a couple weeks ago, it was in brand new condition. I'll mention it was donated by a local yachting couple. They're building a new boat and this will be their anchor. They've got previous experience with aluminum spades and they, they like my tests and they figured, hey, let's get them that anchor and see how it really stacks up. Note that the, the paint is already coming off. So it's just, just the cobble and a few sandy seabed poles and it's already looking like a very used anchor. I question why they would have painted it in the first place, but uh, it, it did look nice when it was new. Similar to the steel spade anchor, the aluminum version chain attach hole is not terribly large. A half inch shackle will not fit. 7 16 shackles will fit no problem and they do not bind but it's just right on the edge it's it'd be nice if it could be opened up just a little bit more and I actually have an idea uh, if this were my anchor I wouldn't waste any time I'd take an eighth inch router bit this is a round over standard little bit and just clean up that corner and it would make it look a lot nicer and I think the shackle would just be a lot more free Smaller shackles, 3 8 no problem, lots of, lots of extra space, no way it would bind. So the A100 got the full range of my testing, including new winch pull testing. But I'll try to keep it short and just show you the most important clips. Enjoy. Okay, we'll get things started with reset testing in the sandy mud. Uh, did 10, 10 pulls back and forth with the long chain road. This is 80 feet of 5 16 chain plus some nylon at five to one scope and that was a pretty typical one uh, not an immediate reset uh, but not a long drag either and each and every time it did bring the boat to a nice stop uh, but it wasn't quite as solid as the steel spade anchor the steel spade boy you just can't get it to go anywhere you can drag and yank it as much as you want and nothing happens Here's the same same test again, but with uh, with the short chain road, only 15 feet of chain. Correction, it's 12 feet of chain plus nylon, and uh, more breakouts, a little bit longer drags, but a very similar result. Uh, stops the boat immediately. That that one right there, boy, it just it flipped out and reset just right now. So it's a very very good performance. Uh, did does come up with lots of mud on it um, and unlike other anchors that foul terribly with mud and then don't reset It doesn't seem to matter. It just gets the job done Okay, let's see how it stacks up against the other anchors uh, first column in the performance section So that's the far left hand column. We see 180 degree reset sandy mud That's just what we looked at and we follow it down. I've got the aluminum spade a 100 highlighted in light green It gets a four the up above it in highlighted blue, we see the Spade S100. It gets a five. It just doesn't get any better. And then below the aluminum Excel number five, I gave that a three. So the aluminum Spade is is right in the middle of these these three candidates that we're looking at today. Next is a maximum holding power check in the sandy mud with the new winch setup. We've got simultaneous cameras running. We can see the uh, in the window there, that's a, a murky image of the bottom. The anchor just disappeared as we're cranking in on the winch for the first 15 foot segment. I, if you haven't watched any of these winch test uh, videos yet, you might want to go back and kind of look at my protocols. 
Uh, but in any event, there's a there's a, a large uh, anchor out front. I call a dead man anchor, and we're winching in on it. Uh, the boat is uh, then pulling the test anchor forward, and we can see it's generating lots of holding power. I'm seeing 3,400, 3,500. Makes it all the way up to 3,900 pounds briefly, and then it seemed to kind of stabilize, and that's what I called it. I'm I'm going to go ahead and just give peak peak numbers here. I'm not going to try and determine sort of a non-moving holding power. Uh, I could get into that in great detail, but uh, there's some technical reasons for me to just give the peak number, and we saw it just there. It was 3,900 pounds, and we are at 5 to 1 scope with an all Dyneema road, no chain. Very, very impressive. So here's a brand new chart that I made up, and we're going to be seeing this a lot here in the future. Okay, below the quick set, we've got our anchor of the day, the Spade A100. First column in the 5 to 1 scope, we see our 3,900 pounds of holding. Uh, divided by the weight of the anchor, come to 144 units of holding for each anchor unit. And wow, that is a very, very high number. Uh, to the right, we see the 8 to 1 scope column. And without a snatch block in line of the winch, I just can't get any higher than 4,000. So I stopped there, and I did order a snatch block. It'll be coming, and I'll, I'll, I'll do all testing that's over, say, two or 3,000 pounds. I'll, I'll switch to that snatch block just to go easy on that winch. I don't, I don't want to burn that motor up here in the first season. Next test is the veering test in Sandy Mud. The protocol is 7 to 1 scope, a rope only road, uh, 860 pound baseline thrust. Uh, the thrust is vectored to one side by just moving the, the motor steering a little bit and the boat then drifts sideways as it's continuing to pull the anchor. I do have the camera playback speed at 8 times. Uh, we saw the anchor hop out of the seabed and immediately reset. Um, I didn't have time to even slow down the engine, so I just continued with the veer. We can see the road in the bottom part of the screen moving to the left, or if we're looking downward, or looking away from the anchor, that would be a starboard veer. Uh, not a lot of motion, but uh, this anchor does pop out. It did it twice, uh, but it resets so fast, uh, the total motion uh, from the starting point is not excessive. Uh, at some point here, the 180 degrees of veer stops, and then I ramp up power, and this new test boat will pull 1,300 pounds plus uh, just with the propeller, and I gave it that full amount, and that was fantastic. This anchor frequently comes up with lots of mud attached, but it does not appear to be affected by it. So if we find the veer sandy mud column, that's the third performance column over from the left. And then looking down to the bright green row, that's the A100. I gave it a 4 out of 5. Uh, Would have got a 5 for sure if it hadn't have popped out, but I uh, had to downgrade it. Uh, we look up to the Spade S100, the steel version. It just doesn't get any better. It stayed perfectly engaged throughout its veer. And then below the A100, we see the aluminum Excel number 5. It had a bit more motion uh, during its veer. gave it a 3. Next test area is the cobblestone seabed. I use real shallow water, only 6 feet today and a 120 foot road. Uh, the idea is to have the chain not lift at the anchor, so we're effectively infinite scope. Uh, we see the yellow paint there on the fluke that never gets covered, never goes away, so only about half the fluke uh, penetrates. The anchor does stay upright, I'll give it that, and it's always gallantly trying, but never made more than about 215 pounds of holding. And if we look at the peak holding power chart, we'll see that uh, 215 is not the worst on the, uh, in, the, in the group, but it is definitely not the best. Um, in red down there, we'll see the very worst cobblestone anchor I've ever tested. That was a 50-pound CQR, and it just did nothing. The very best is a 51-pound Viking in blue at the bottom. We see 840 pounds of holding. That's the best, best anchor I've ever tested. Uh, even if we go to the very bottom of the chart, we see 116 pound Bruce. It only made 465 pounds. But back up there to the top of the chart, uh, the two 27 pound aluminum anchors, the Spade and the Excel, they're both real similar, just above 200 pounds of holding in the cobblestone seabed. Next is another holding power check using the winch, this time in the soft mud at Scow Bay. Now this is the final of three 15-foot segment poles that I did. So the anchors had 40 feet or more to set at this point. And this seabed 
really, really takes a long time for anchors to reach their maximum holding potential. And I really don't know what that distance is. But for these mid-range anchors, I'm just going to cut them all off here at three of those segments of road that I pull in, or 45 total feet. And we see this anchor makes it right up around 500 pounds of holding. I do know that if you pull harder or faster, it will hold more. I've done that with the engine thrust, uh, but the that requires a lot of speed. Uh, we see the Spade A100, it made 500 pounds, and the Aluminum Excel, it made 700 pounds. So the Excel does have an advantage in holding here in the soft mud. And I'll note that the bo both of the steel versions of these anchors, it's the same, same situation. The Excel does a little better than the Spade. And looking at the comparison chart in the soft mud holding column, we see that both spades got threes, the aluminum Excel got a four, and the uh, steel Excel also got a four. Very best here so far for non-pivoting fluke anchors would be the Viking 20. It gets a five. And the very worst was the Delta. It didn't make much holding power at all. Next is the veering test in the soft mud at Scow Bay. Note I've got two windows here that we're looking at. There's two cameras running simultaneously. Get everything all synchronized. Uh, transfer that road back to the stern of the boat. Uh, the target for this is a 500 pound baseline thrust and this anchor took a long time to set. Uh, I had to really nurse it slowly because if you remember 500 pounds was pretty much the maximum that we saw out of the winch testing. Uh, but it eventually, the boat did stop its, its forward motion, and I commenced a veer to starboard. Seemed to hold fairly well. Un unfortunately, in the upper right there, we don't get to see much because we're just really turbid water. Uh, one thing we know is when this camera is moving, the tethers will angle away from the view, but we can see they're pointing straight down. So at this point I've stopped the veering to the side and just pulling straight ahead with ever increasing power. I'm calling out uh, GPS boat speeds there and we can see those camera tethers uh, dragging away from us downward in that upper right view. So looking back to the comparison uh, ranking chart, uh, see the soft mud veer column has not been populated fully and I've just got uh, just the rating from uh, poor to excellent. Uh, we see in the light green, the A100 was a good. The Excel, uh, aluminum Excel number five was poor. Uh, one of the better, best anchors was the Viking 20, and also the 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 40 pound Knox was excellent here as well. But uh, again, this is unfinished business. All these X's need to be filled out, and then I'll get numbers plugged in as soon as possible. Final test is the veer in the clean, loose sand, and the normal protocol for the larger anchors is about 850 pounds of baseline thrust, but I made a mistake and only did 535 pounds of baseline thrust, but it turned out to be the right thing to do because the anchor could not maintain uh, its grip during the veer. It looked like it was going to do fine, but toward the tail end, I think it was the yeah 150 degree mark, the anchor uh, just released completely. We're going to see it here momentarily. The anchor uh, does pull out on its side. Camera speed is eight times here. That's why everything's happening so fast. Uh, the anchor does uh, drag a bit, but it does reset. So I just uh, continue with the veer through uh, the last 30 degrees to 180. And then increased power. Uh, made it up to 1,020 pounds of thrust and the anchor released again. And with a last look at the comparison chart, we'll look at the clean sand holding column. I gave that spade a fair, and the veer gave it a poor. Uh, remember, it was kind of downgraded thrust from the others, and it had a release. So you plug in all the numbers that I, I used in the performance average, get, got a 3.6, which was a, a little better than the aluminum Excel at 3.4. But the aluminum spade is clearly not as good a performer as the steel Spade S100. Uh, continuing to the right, we've got more columns that are not having to do with performance directly. Uh, for price, the aluminum Spade is, uh, I gave it a 1.5 because it is quite expensive. It is not as expensive as the aluminum Excel. It gets a 1. 
Uh, engineering and strength is actually a real question mark. I threw a three down for the A100, um, but without without breaking this thing, I really don't know how strong it is. Uh, galvanizing corrosion is a, is another question mark. Of course, there is no galvanizing, so I'd like to give it a five, but it does have that presence of dissimilar metal. Big blobs of lead uh, melted into the tip. So gave, I gave, downgraded it, gave it a four. Total uh, tip to total weight ra weight ratio is very good. That gets a four. And self-launching power on all the spades is very high. It's the way, the way that shank is shaped. You end up with a, a very aggressive launching anchor. It gets a five. So total average was 3.6. Um, a little bit better than the aluminum XL at 3.3. And, of course, the Spade S100, the steel version, gets a 3.8. So the big question is, is why did this anchor perform slightly less than the steel Spade version of this same sized anchor? And uh, the two big possibilities are the weight itself. You know, it's a lighter anchor. Um, but I think, more importantly, it is in the width of that shank. I think the... Uh, this flat face on the underside here that is wider, I think that is just going to inhibit penetrating ability. Uh, the overall width of the shank is greater, so it's just going to take more effort, more force to push that downward. And, well, at some point, the anchor just won't be able to penetrate as deeply. Uh, I'll give you a few more looks at some construction details. Uh, spade anchor shanks are removable. They're held in place by a single locating bolt. It's non-load bearing. Uh, the shank slips through a, a nice fitting socket. And we are looking at the very bottom of the shank. You can see that it is hollow. It's made out of three pieces of metal, one side, two side, and then a small piece in the middle. Uh, it is a welded structure. Also, I mentioned that the lead is exposed to the salt water. It's just poured into these cavities. You might not be able to see it, but if you look inside there, it appears that they either poured heavy paint or maybe epoxy on top of the lead in an effort to seal it from the salt water. And let's assume that it is sealed out of the box, but I just cannot imagine that that kind of a treatment will be permanent. Okay, we've got to give another big thanks to the couple that provided the anchor for this test. I likely would have never bought one of these due to their high cost. Uh, thanks to everyone else who's been supporting, whether you're just watching, commenting, or sending in your cash. Uh, it's, all, it's all hugely appreciated. Uh, as always, I hope everyone has a, a good safe time out on the water. We'll see you next time.